lot of people will make the comparisons and say, oh, we've got the middle income trap, and that's what really, really hurt uh, Japan at the end of the day. But China is, is a far less developed country than Japan was when it was going through its economic struggles. So if you look at urbanization, China today is 60% urbanized. Most mature countries are over 80% urbanized. That's a huge lift in productivity when you've got another 20% of the population that's yet to be urbanized. The same thing is true on income. You know, if you look at Japan by comparison, Japan's income per person was not that different from the income in the United States. In China today, the income and GDP are both about a third of where the U.S.'s income and GDP are, which means there's an enormous amount of headroom going forward. So if I put all those pieces together and say, okay, here's the country with a track record of getting things done, an approach to governance with a quality of leaders uh, and a, an approach to making decisions both strategic and operational that leads to high levels of execution. And you've got a cohesive, large population that's supportive of national goals. So if I think about, you know, going back to the theme in the beginning, has China peaked? Um, if you believe, like many in the West do, that China... Uh, only succeeded because of uh, stealing IP from the West uh, and unfair trade deals uh, and has never really demonstrated the ability to innovate. Um, that's a good story, but it doesn't square with the facts. And the reality is uh, China has a lot of strengths going for it.